All right, our trap has let us know we have a swash fine borer moth. They have arrived. So what's next? There's a few things you can do at this point. You can wrap your vines in foil. That can work depending on how aggressive your squash vine borers are. Mine are very plentiful and aggressive. So I would have to wrap the entire length of the vines to protect in this manner. So I'd have to start at the base and wrap every joint as it grows, which is a lot, as you can see here. So what I'm gonna do instead is go straight to what works best for me, which is to take a dirt mix, anything with some nutrients in it. This is actually a mix, uh, one third peat moss with two thirds uh, compost manure mix. So it's got some nutrients to feed the roots that will grow in it from the nodes. This is what we're going to put and cover our vines with. Um, as I've discussed before, we've got the three main cultivars of squash, which is the Maxima, the Pepo, and the Machada. Maxima is the favorite. Uh, Pepo gets attacked pretty regularly. Um, it's not the favorite, but you're going to notice a lot of damage to it. And then the most resistant to the squash vine borer is the Mushada cultivar. Uh, Mushadas are interesting. They're really easy to identify. If you look here, see the leaves? It's easy to identify. A lot of people see the leaves of the Mushada and think maybe it's um, some sort of wilt. But it's their leaves have this beautiful pattern on them with silver and that's actually normal for the cultivar as you'll see here this silver is normal for this type here we have maxima maxima of course um, I'm not seeing any um, of the silver coloration you'll see in a machada so and the pepos are usually the uh, squash that people will harvest early for the summer squash. There's an example of that. Um, this is a scallop squash. And you'll see it doesn't have any of the silver linings. This is a violina, which is a machada. And here again, we show that coloration. So what we're going to do start covering all right go ahead and take this leaf off so you can get a good vantage point so we got some blossoms that's exciting now what I always do is go ahead and check the base and see if there's any eggs. Eggs are gonna be along the stem, depending on how lucky you are. Some people only get them in the bottom. Um, I will eventually get eggs all through the full length. Look at that, little baby. Through the full length of the plant. Like we're catching it early. They're singular and copper colored. Whereas like the squash bug, which is different from the squash vine borer moth, uh, the squash bug will lay its eggs in a symmetrical pattern, in a group. Squash vine borer eggs are singular and just dotted along the stem. And sometimes they look like dirt, so sometimes it can be hard to tell putting on your dirt. You have that lovely red dirt. Might be a little more difficult. Make sure that's dirt, thank God. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here, the most important part is the base.
you will get more blossoms. That's the why a lot of people don't do the covering because you're gonna end up covering some of the blossoms. Keep in mind that as I showed you a second ago, the fruit will develop further on the vine. So especially in the early stages, just cover this, just protect it. You'll still get a good harvest because what's gonna happen is at these nodes, there will be roots forming. In fact, if you look here, that is gonna form a root right there. I want all my vines facing south, just because that's, that's what works in my garden. I know you're thinking, oh my God, I can't believe she's covering the whole thing. This is to start. This is, I had to do it heavy right here, so it would train this way instead of south, instead of north. And then at each joint, you're gonna wanna cover it. All right, y'all, to recap the steps, check your traps. Look what we have here. That one's still alive. I will take care of that in a second. Off camera. We have squash vine borer moths. Indicators worked. They are currently next to a likely maxima. Notice we don't have the silver veining. First thing we do, we check check for eggs. These are probably males looking for a female. beyond thrilled I don't think I've ever caught it right before they start laying eggs I've caught it same day but not right before so I'm super excited okay expose the stem get it trained where you want it to go I want it to head south see we have a little root little node here get your dirt pile it on press it down just a little bit we don't want any nicks and crannies now what's going to happen is anything exposed is where the squash vine borer moth is going to lay her eggs. So this is not a one-time um, project. As we go, we'll continue wherever there isn't fruit um, or under, we definitely underneath fruit, but not on top of fruit. We will continue to place dirt. So this one. care for fruits later as you know these vines are going to get 20 feet long so um, covering up the first foot or so honestly not a big deal um, as long as you leave some green of green of course leave some green so uh, that the plant can of course gain the nutrients from the sun um, as we go we'll keep placing more on these and again you want to do these for all three cult primary cultivars of squash um, the maxima the pepo and the machata machata is going to be most resistant because their stems are a little thicker it's a little bit harder for the borer to actually um, get into the stem so you will see eggs on the stem of a machata cultivar but they're less likely to burrow inside which is why i love the machata so much but some of the most interesting, like the Red Curry and the Big Max, huge record-breaking pumpkins, most of those are Maximas, and uh, that's a favorite of the squash wine borer. So that's why I fight this fight, because I want those interesting cultivars that are absolutely delicious. So let's take a look. Doing all my squash with this dirt took about 10 minutes or less. Didn't take that long. So that's a nice thing, just grab your dirt, start dumping it. Give it a little pat with your foot. And see, we have fruit on this one. And it'll be just fine. And that's an overview of the primary strategy I use to make sure it's a delicious squash in squash fiber country. As you can see with my trap placement, 
Right now I have three, I will be buying more. The traps that are by the two Maximas, I have more than two. Uh, two traps are by Maximas, I have the squash vine borers in them. Down here I have a C. Peppo. That trap is empty yet, it will fill. Um, but Maxima is clearly the favorite. Um, this is the third or fourth year I've done covering. And if you're diligent, it actually does work. Now, if you have, of course, 700 squash plants, um, I understand that's not gonna work for you. My goal is to give all the options, what worked and what didn't, and based on your particular garden, make the choices that are best for you. It is my goal in life to help people grow squash because I know so many people just stop growing squash because of the squash vine borders and that makes me sad because uh, squash is delicious. So I'm going to do what I can. Thank you. Please visit my website as well, eighthdeadlysin.org, O-R-G. Um, on there, on the main page, stickied, you will find um, my article, my heart and soul, where I went through 10 different strategies of combating the squash vine borer moth and the borer itself. Um, and you can get everything in one fell swoop without waiting for the videos. Uh, if you wish to check that out, there's also a link on my about page and a link in my link tree. Um, and please share. I want everyone growing squash who loves it as much as I do.